Episode five, endure and survive. Do you know the sign language for that? Endure and survive. Is that it? What is it? Okay, sure. Endure. Endure. And survive. And survive. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> I'll take her word for that. That looks about what they were doing in the show. I could be very wrong, but could I think be very that's wrong. what they I'm were sorry. doing. Um, so we did record a reaction video to this for the first time. We just plopped this camera in front of us <laughs> as we watched. We're going to upload it and see what happens. Yeah. So it might be up. It might get pulled down. If you don't see it, that's what happened. So, all right. Endure and survive. Oh, man. Oh, what a fucking episode. Just, seriously. Now, as you guys all know, we're massive fans of the game. You know, the majority of this is stuff we already expected to happen. The changes here, there are some, for sure. Mm -hmm. There's additions, right? But I'm going to say it again. For the 800th time during this, they know exactly what to adapt and they know exactly what to play around with. Yes, 100%. Just, and, and, and for the sole reason of making the story richer, for doing more for the character development of everyone around, mm -hmm. even if a character is only going to be an episode for, uh, for one episode, they're not only well-rounded three-dimensional characters that have arcs and, 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 you know, they, um, complete whatever journey and, and tasks that they had to do, mm -hmm. right? But also they they make Joel or Ellie or Joel and Ellie grow yeah. right along their journey, which is the point. And, and, and the way that they make them grow, every one of these characters, whether it's Tess, mm -hmm. whether it's Sam and Henry now, whether whatever, they just, they make these choices that are so smart and just add so much to something I already love so much. And I'm going to talk about something else in a minute. I'm going to let Taylor talk. But uh, there, there's also something really cool on the flip side of that when it comes to the games, mm. uh, because the show does enrich things quite a bit, right? It has that time to do the dramatic stuff. Right. But what is really cool about the games for anyone who's like excited about the show and is like, well, shit, I don't really play video games, or I do play video games, I've never played this one, I want to play them, I want to at least watch the walkthrough or whatever... There is something to be had from that experience, too, where while this show might not be able to, uh, or video games might not be able to take their time with these long cutscenes, mm -hmm. you know, of dramatic uh, sequences without action, what the video game's able to do is it's able to add a lot of, like, um, like letters and, sure. and exploration. The world right. The yeah, world, you there's... can be a little more detailed with it in the video game. Sure, because For people sure. have time to sit down and read yeah. like a full letter, and there's 600 of them. There's a ton. It just gives you game. such a great perspective of the state of the world currently, like as you're playing the game and previously, and um, what you were saying about like all of the characters and the additions that they're making. I feel like all of the stories that we've seen, like, they're important to the theme of the show. Like, they're all different aspects of this major theme that Joel and Ellie are going through, the journey that they're going through together. And it just, it fits so perfectly with everything. Yeah. All of the additions, so. Sure. Um, so, okay, let's start at the beginning, yeah. and let's work our way up. Uh, I Hopefully the re the reaction gets to stay up because <laughs> there's one in particular that I, like I've been talking about this entire time, yeah. <laughs> right? So getting to see my actual reaction uh, was, is probably cool. pretty cool. If if nothing else, at least you have that. Um, but anyways, all right. So starting at the beginning, we get a flashback of about eleven days um, prior to where we were in episode four. And that is Henry and Sam as they are making their way through Kansas City and eventually ending up in that attic that Kathleen finds with all the open cans and everything. And she's like, they're running out of food, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, they meet up with the doctor who Kathleen has uh, shot. Yes. Um, and they, you know, we see 
uh, Sam coloring his pictures and, yeah. and the superhero thing. Oh. And we also see that in order to make Sam feel brave, hmm. Henry comes to him, has him close his eyes, paints his face like a superhero, calls him Super Sam. And this is really great because at the very end, we get this great exchange between Ellie and Sam where he's just like, you know, are you scared? This and that. And it's really just like, you know, him trying to find that strength. And, and we can see that, that Henry, you know, was his strength and, and Sam was his motivation. It's so wonderful what they've done with Sam and Henry's story. Yeah. Um, it's in different. one episode. It's in, in one, one episode. episode. But the differences from the game, like, we were really impressed with because it, it really enriches what they're going through. But, for example, like, in the game, Henry does not want Sam to have, like, any toys or bring anything that isn't absolutely necessary. He's yeah. very concerned with survival and kind of trying to prepare Sam, you know, to not be a kid anymore, which... No frills. Sam is older in yeah. the game he's closer to ellie's age yeah. yeah and in the show he's eight he's yeah. still a young kid but with like the version that we get of henry in this is really nice to see like how it's he's so sweet with him and like the coloring with the crayons on the wall and the painting and everything i just felt like i really i loved the the brother bond that they have because you know they are brothers but obviously Henry is in more of like a, a paternal uh, role in yeah. this instance because he's taking care of him. And also, you know, having Sam be deaf was a really great decision. Uh, and just it was really interesting because it's like, obviously we have Joel with his ear, you know, that's a, kind of a handicap. And this isn't presented as a handicap, but it's just another reason why Sam has to rely on Henry yeah, I mean, exactly. Um, as we, you know, got to hear in yes. the behind-the-scenes little video that they have after the episode, which I definitely recommend you always watch that and listen to the official podcast and everything for good insight. We haven't gotten to listen to the podcast yet, but we definitely did watch the behind-the-scenes making of, and Craig and, and Neil kind of give you a, a quick rundown of why they made certain decisions. Mm -hmm. And as Kaylee said, I think it was Craig that was like, you know, um, he becomes more reliant on him because he is deaf and, mm -hmm. and that is that is great now my question is you know i don't know when henry sold kathleen's mm -hmm. uh or um yeah kathleen's um brother out mm -hmm. right i have to wonder unless they said i'm gonna watch the episode again of course <laughs> but is the sickness what deafened sam mm. right oh because people can get um what do they get somebody that you can get a you can, i mean obviously like a fever or something but there's there's a specific illness and it's a pretty common one that kids get real young mm. and they go deaf mm. from and i'm completely spacing on what that is i don't know uh, well, it doesn't matter, but I'm just thinking like, and it is something that has medicine, right? Mm -hmm. And, and, and it's curable, but like if it goes too long, it can deafen them. Mm. Right. Um, so I don't know if that was that because I don't know if we get a time frame. and Henry, uh, Sam is eight. You don't really learn how to talk all that well until you're like one and a half, two, so it, it, you know, six years easily well, could have been in that time uh -huh. that he sold them out. But I think the medicine. I think that it, he says that he has leukemia, and that's the medicine that he was trying oh. to get for him. So I don't know. Oh, maybe you're right. Yeah. Okay. But leukemia for who? It's for Sam, though. Right. Right. That they, 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 he gets the medicine. Right. Okay. Yeah. So Sam has leukemia. Can leukemia deafen you? I don't know. I don't think so. It's cancer of the blood. Right. I, I, I have no uh, idea. I don't think so. So maybe, yeah. I just, but, just a thought. Yeah. I need to watch the episode of, sure. uh, you know, 17 more times. <laughs> like I will, yeah. And I'll get a better side of that. Doesn't matter. Completely uh, irrelevant. Moving on. Um, the hypocrisy. I, I definitely oh, want to man. talk about, um, you know, Kathleen's hypocrisy here. Because, you know, 
she's mad at Henry because Henry sold out her brother for his brother. And it's like, you know, you let my brother die. And it's like, I had to, I had to do that to save my brother. Yeah. So it's either your brother or it's my brother, right? And mm-hmm. my brother's a kid. What would you do? And we already know what Kathleen would do. I mean, she's yeah. scoured entire... her. She gets everyone who follows her, including herself, killed. Yes. Because she is on a path of vengeance. Yes. And she can't see through it. And it's because she does not listen to her brother, who's telling her to forgive. Yeah. That, you know, she doesn't heed his uh, warning. Or, that's no, not his warning. But... She That's just doesn't what follow it... his advice. Yes, there you and go. it's like, you know, the things people will do for love, right? But it's total destruction for her entire community. At I... the sake of somebody who's already dead. That's the thing too. She's not even trying to save her brother. He's already gone. Sure. She's just trying to fight back because she's so angry and hurt and, you know, he was ripped away from her and she's like, "Why should Sam get to live and my brother die. But it is that kind of a scenario where it's like, you are trading one life for the other, but one of them had to die anyway. And letting the kid live is like, again, with the hope for humanity and children, right? (laughs) And Sam had nothing to do with that decision. Nothing. Right? Nothing at all. So Henry did this, which cost Kathleen's brother his life. Which I have to wonder if Kathleen's brother, who's a great man, supposedly, Mm. would he sacrifice himself for that kid? Being Mm. a great man, probably. I mean, he was the leader of, like, the religious community, too. Sure. So I feel like he would, because... Sure. Yeah. So you've got that. He's also, like, forgive them. Right. Right? Like, you know, maybe he... I don't know if they know... Why? Mm. I, I think she, I think it 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 seems like she knows why mm. that he did it, but she she knows why. Okay. Yeah, that he got medicine. Right. That's yeah, what I thought. She knows. Okay. So she's really angry at both of them, which is like why the her reaction to you know <laughs> when Henry's like just let say like let the kids go, and she's like, well, no, because the girls with Joel right. and Sam's with you, so. Sure, she's, she's just, just blinded by a vengeance. Yes. Which, of course, like, if someone killed my brother yeah. to save their child, and the child was sick or whatever, and it was like completely, and it's a child anyway, but like if it was completely unbeknownst to that child, in addition to them being a child, would I want vengeance on the guy who killed my brother to save their kid? Maybe, probably, I don't know. Would I want to kill the kid? No, because then my brother literally died for nothing. Yes. Right? So, like, she is completely missing yeah. that aspect of it. Exactly. But to her, it's like, no, you don't get your brother if I don't get my brother. Right. Right? Even though he's a child, even though he had nothing to do with it, it's not like he helped you sell him out. Well, right. So her hypocrisy there and, and just complete blinded rage is what ultimately, you know, was going to cost them everything, but then ends up costing her and all yeah. of her men who followed her uh, and her and her path of revenge. It, it got them all killed. Every one of them. Everyone. But th- that's just the thing, right? Like love blinds. Yeah. It's the same situation with it's, Henry and Sam. Is that why my vision goes all wonky when I look at you? Yeah. I was like, you're like, what? Whoa, my love but, is blinding me. Can't look at you anymore. I'm seriously, go so when Sam, you know, when Sam dies, when Henry has to ki- shoot him, he's lost everything. His whole world Absolutely. is gone. And in this, in this universe, in this world, where people are finding, like, if you have family or a friend or a loved one or whoever that you're like bonded with, and then that person goes away, it is like, what's the point? Of anything, you know? So I think that her reaction is believable and understandable, even though it is not, it's like reprehensible too, you know? Yeah. So, but it sucks. It's like a very, very painful scenario. Yeah. I mean, it's it's not something I can't like understand and it's not unbelievable at all. A hundred percent. I get why she's doing it. I get the motivation and to give the hunters a face, to Mm -hmm. give... A, a, a very good reason 
for why they'd be so after Henry and Sam, right? For not to just be like, they're out. They're doing whatever they're doing mm-hmm. and, and we're running and, and they just want to kill us because they just want to kill us kind of stuff. Like in the game, it's like, I don't know. That's not very interesting for a show. But to connect it in this way, for her to go to her childhood home um, where she's like remembering what she did in that room with her brother and looking at the you know stuff on the walls and all that. And then we get that mirror shot of Henry and Sam in their little room mm-hmm. and there's like drawings on the wall and everything and you see the bond and the kinship between them and it's like you'll do anything for family. Yes. Right? So she, yeah. I totally get where she's coming from but the fact that she wants to kill Sam Yeah, I mean it's, She's completely it's just, missing it, it all. As you said at the very least it's like then they will have died for nothing. You know, but Sure, but she as yeah. It doesn't matter to her because It's an eye for an eye. <laughs> yeah. Killed my brother, kill your brother. Yeah. And you. Right. Right? So, okay. Um, moving on from that, um, getting to them uh, confronting Joel and Ellie and getting us to the, the now of, the, of where the cliffhanger was in the last episode. Um, there is a super funny moment that is like legit one of the Joelest moments <laughs> ever and Ellie too. But when... Henry's like, you know, we're going to put the guns down. You know, mm-hmm. can we trust you? This and that. Joel, like, says it all, you know, in this <laughs> gruff voice. And he's like, it's the tone. <laughs> and Ellie's just like, he has an asshole voice. <laughs> he's like, right, Joel, so Joel, you know, try to get it. Try it again. And he's just, again, same fucking tone. <laughs> same, like, now nah, I'm going to kill you the second you put these guns down. <laughs> That, I was laughing about it for like, like I, for a it, full minute. Everything fine or something? He's like, everything's great. And the way he says that, <laughs> just like, because he's got guns in his face. And yeah. oh my God, so funny. I don't think it was even meant, I don't know. I don't think it was meant to be a comedic beat, but it was like really funny. A hundred percent it's comedic. A hundred percent it's comedic. Because of, uh, because of Ellie's Because of reactions. Ellie's line. Mm. Yeah. He just has an asshole voice and then he <laughs> says it again. She's like, Joel. Like, she's almost like the parent in that situation, right? Right. Which is kind of mirroring to Sarah and Joel's relationship when she's making him breakfast in the morning and he's, like, checking on her schoolwork and she's like, please. Like, you're not the dad. You're not the parent like that here, right? Right. You're the provider, but you're not the the mom. You're not the caregiver in that way. Um, But anyways, that was super, super funny. Um, And then they give Joel and Henry these roles where it shows us why they're working together, Mm. right? We see that Henry knows the city and Joel is, you know, a badass and can protect them because he sees them through the window, killing these guys, Mm -hmm. doing his thing. And he knows that this is the kind of guy that can take out threats. Such a great dynamic for them. Sure. And it makes so much sense, you know, for the They need each other. Yes. Yeah, and that's that's the whole point. Yeah. And to give it that, right? They kind of need each other in the game. They 100% need each other here. Yes. Right? Now, we get some definite differences, right? There there's they're just they're just expediting things here. And as far as like, okay, Bill and Frank, they're much more pleasant. In yeah. the in the show, Henry and Sam, they're more likable in the show, right? Henry mm-hmm. is not on Sam's ass about like taking a toy. So in the right. game, uh, Sam wants to take this like Transformers esque toy mm-hmm. from this store. He tells him to put it back, right? We don't carry anything. He's like, my bag's basically empty, and it's like, you know, you know what it is, right? You know the rules. We don't take anything we don't need. Um, and so he makes it put it back. And in this, as, as Kayla was saying, he's got the crayons. He's bringing superfluous things. Yeah. They don't need these things, but he's do, he's doing it to, to entertain him, to make him feel comfortable, to make him feel safe, which is more realistic yeah. for a kid. I mean, you can do the other way, but this is just a much more loving version of things. Oh, yeah. Um, and makes us, makes us, like, believe his love for his brother more. Um, but I get the other side of it too. The hard, sure. like, you know, tough love and I got to show you how the world really is. And to be fair, Henry is 
Our Sam is older. I was just going to say, I think that the version we get in the, in the show is much more appropriate for his age. Yeah. Because trying to like get an eight-year-old to grow up versus to get like a 13 or 14-year-old to grow up is like very different. Sure. So you got that change. Um, there's also a change of when they're down in the tunnels, they get separated. Mm -hmm. And Henry is with Ellie. And uh, Joel is with Sam, and they have to get their, or no, Joel's by himself. They're all three together on the other other side, right? Yeah. Right, because you yeah you're just crouching around by yourself. Yeah. You're not with anybody. That's right. They get separated from Joel, and so Joel has to rely on Henry to protect Ellie because he doesn't know who he is at this point, really. Like, they're kind of working together, but he doesn't trust him. And so they have to get separated in these tunnels where that, um, you know, underground, um, like, residence was. Mm -hmm. Where they had, like, a, like, they had a little school and everything that we see in here. And the, the recreation of the sets. Oh, man. With the room, with, with, the, with the drawings on the wall and the goal on, on yeah. the wall. And the, and the drawing. The, the of, rules. Yeah, you know, that too, the, that. the, the, the um, dry erase board yeah. with the rules, that's all identical. And then we get the um, the drawing of, mm. of our protectors, right. Donnie and Ish. Oh, that and was And this so is where cool. I was actually thinking, that's where it came to me, was like, you know, and, and I think it's Craig that even says, it might have been Neil, I can't remember, but it really dawned on me, um, like the sun that I'm waiting for. The pun from the last episode doesn't matter. <laughs> um, they that you can get a richer sense of that environment if you play the game. Yes, right. Like you get to see letters um, from these people. Oh my gosh, and and yeah. and ish, and it's kind of like what they were up to down mm -hmm. there and the failure of mm. what happened with, with Ish and, and, and Donnie and their fates yes. and how they felt like they failed them and stuff like that. And it was just such a richness to that environment and the world building. So that was like one of the first things I saw that really made me think like, Oh wow. So you can get a lot more out of the, out of the show, but there's actually a lot that you can also get from the game, even though there are differences mm -hmm. there. You can see like, if you want to know more about what happened down there, right, you can't get it from the show, right. but you can get it from the game. So I think it's absolutely worth your time. If you have any interest in it to at least like maybe Google the freaking notes. Yeah. You could like, you found yeah, go to there. the Wikipedia or something and read through them because it, it is just, um, you know, as you said, like earlier, like you can spend more time like walking around as a gamer, like looking at all these things. And, you know, it's such a detailed environment when you're playing the game that you just don't get as much of the, you know, you get a lot of material to read and look at that gives you the story, like story and backstory for other characters. But you obviously don't get to see those characters because they're gone or dead or whatever. That part of the game, too, when they're in the tunnels, is one of my favorites of the first game. I think it's a really cool section, and yeah. it's very sad and scary. Yeah. And, you know, it, there's um, something very poetic about the fact that, like, they, you know, where they are in the tunnels is obviously, like, where they were teaching kids. Like, there is, there's a bunch of toys, the drawings on the wall, like, that environment. And it just kind of shows, again, like... You know, people trying to protect children is sure. like kind of like the main goal for I think a lot of people in this post-apocalyptic world. Because obviously, without them, you have no other. You know, humanity won't continue. But it's just a nice environment. Not a nice environment, but a like nice. Better environment. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they're doing a pretty piss poor job of it in this show. <laughs> like basically, every kid we've met has either been bitten yeah. and survived. Or died. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, I mean, but it makes sense. Of course. In this world, kids would not do well. No. My kids would not do well. Now, another change from the game that's different here and I completely understand is, as I said, they don't get separated. Um, and also, uh, when you're down in the tunnels, you fight a lot of infected. Mm -hmm. Right? But that wouldn't make sense for this story because there's that, like, looming threat that's going to come up out of the ground 
and they're in the tunnels. And if Joel and Ellie and, and Sam and Henry were like, you know, shooting and fighting all these things, it would a taken a lot of time. And they're like, we're just going to save the action for the end. Totally makes sense there. And mm. B like, you'd hear that the monsters would all hear that they'd all converge on that spot. They needed all the sound and all the fighting to happen in the town. Right. So it makes perfect sense to take all that. We don't need any of that stuff. We yeah. we're, we're here for the story. So we move on from there. Yeah. It's just expedited. So next up from there, another, uh, st- Oh, uh, what were you going to say? What we found in the tunnels? Of course. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, of course I'm not going to forget <laughs> that. I'm only, I was going to say, but yes, so, in the tunnels, <laughs> the Easter egg I've been asking for since episode one, Savage Starlight finally makes its <laughs> appearance, and I shrieked with you did. joy. You cheered. You I like, was yeah. so happy to see it. I was so happy. It was like my number one Easter egg that I had to see. And I knew that Neil and Craig were going to give it to me. Oh, it I was knew such it. a perfect placement, too. Like, yes. it makes total sense for them to find it there. It would, yeah. And the bonding that Ellie and Sam have over it. It makes a thousand times more sense for them to find it there yeah. than in Bill's town. Yeah. Right? Because when they go to the Bill's town in this version... There, it's his town, and they only go in his house. Mm-hmm. And why the hell would Bill or Frank <laughs> have a Savage Starlight comic? There's just no place for it. Yeah. But to go and have it found in a school. Yes. Right? To have it found in a place where two kids are having a good time, and where a bunch of kids also are having a good time. And it's a place where, you know, they should have been, yeah. right, in their life. This is this is an environment that 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 Sam and Ellie should have grown up in mm-hmm. if the world was fair and just and and the outbreak didn't happen right and to have other kids who enjoyed this before and they get it from this location together and it's mm-hmm. something and another thing for it too and this I just thought of this right now but another huge importance is that the Savage Starlight comics aren't just an Easter egg anymore and this is what I talked about with the pun book. The pun book's what brought Joel and Ellie together. Mm. The Savage Starlight comic now will be a, a constant reminder yeah. of okay. Sam from here on. Yeah. It's the thing they shared together. Yeah. They learn the sign language, the endurance survive that, mm. you know, is set in the Savage Starlight comic. It is relevant to Ellie's journey. Yeah. So now when she collects these, now when she reads these, it's going to have significance to her. It's not going to just be some fun little comic she found on the side of the roll and Joe, Joel is freaking, you know, finding other issues for her throughout. No, no, right. no. This has great significance to her journey, her failure, and also, you know, um, her growth. Yeah. Right? So this is this is such a great inclusion of not only making it being found in an obvious location like a school, but also having it being something that was shared between Joel, and, uh, between Sam and Ellie, because in the game it's this random toy, right? Mm-hmm. But they throw that away. They make it the Savage Starlight comic, which makes perfect sense. And now it's not just an Easter egg; mm-hmm. it has extreme relevance to her as a character from here on. So if we see it pop up in season two and she looks at it, it's not going to be like, oh, there's that Savage Starlight comic that she read. Oh, how cute. It's going to be like, oh, shit. Yeah. That's what she read with Sam. Yeah. So it's going to have significance. Yeah. That's how you do Easter eggs. Yes. Yeah. It incorporates it in such a a more meaningful way. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. freaking lutely So after they decide to leave there, um, another difference here is that Joel and Ellie are ditched by Mm -hmm. Henry and Sam. They get stuck in this situation where um, the hunters are coming after them. I think, is it the hunters at the point? I swear it's, are those people posing in the game? Is that the hunters or is that Fedra and they're still alive? Because I feel like the QZ, are they taken down? I can't remember. I'm pretty sure they're they're taken over the QZ They've taken out. Okay. the game. That's what I thought. But I just... And they're going after of, them. Yeah, because they're driving around their cars and everything. Yeah. And everything. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 100, that's what I was just making sure. <laughs> um, 
You can't ever, you can't keep every single detail straight on the trillion freaking properties that I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, um, so they get separated, uh, and Henry has this moment where he could help or he could run, and he decides to run. And they leave Joel and Ellie. Uh, we, they actually don't leave Joel and Ellie to uh, to die. Actually, Ellie is up there with them. And Joel's like, run. And he's going to take off on his own to try to survive. And Ellie's like, fuck that. Right. And she jumps back down to him. And she's like, we stick together. Yeah. And that is such a great moment in the show. I hope that they can somehow incorporate that mm. in. Because it is a great moment for them. Mm-hmm. For her to like have safety. You know? But she's like, no. And he's like, what are you doing? You're like, you know, the salvation of right. mankind. You, you can't. Put yourself in harm's way. But it's like at that point, she's she is bonded to Joel. She is she's committed to that relationship and him, and she is not going anywhere. No. So no, no, that's no. that's one moment I do miss, kind of, but I do understand we yeah. don't want to make Henry questionable. Right. He has to be noble. He has to be doing he says he's a bad guy that did the bad guy thing. And for him to do it again, right? He sold out somebody already. Then he runs off on Joel. It would just kind of make him look like a shit. Sure. Right? So the, I completely understand why they didn't do it. Right. And the point of what he does is all for, you know, Sam. So it is supposed to be something that the audience can relate to, right? Like he's trying to save his brother. Sure. Right? Even if he is the bad guy in that situation. Because it muddies the lines between, you know, what is good and bad. Yeah. So, yeah. But I do like that moment from the game. Um, you know, Muddies the lines. Is muddies it? the water. Muddies the waters mean? and blurs the lines. Blurs the lines. You can blurs buy the water. Them. It's fine. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I just was like, huh? Okay. Yeah, muddies the, the water. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I, maybe we'll get a similar scene, but it's okay if not. I think if that, um, you know, that moment in the game is not touched upon again. I think it will be. Hmm. I think it will be, but it's totally fine if it's not. I, I don't. It doesn't bother me that it's not here because I completely understand why they didn't do it. Um, now in the game, Henry does save Joel from drowning because they have to ultimately make this leap, mm-hmm. uh, and Joel goes after Ellie because she can't swim, and they're in the in the water and there's rushing water, and Joel gets like knocked out, and then you know he wakes up and and Henry is pulled him out of the water. And Joel goes to try to kill him. Because he left him behind, but then you know he talks him out of it, and so on from there. And then that's when they meet. They, that's when they get to the town, um, which is like once again oh, the man. the the tunnels. That room they get into is exactly the same as the game. This town to make a room look like the game is impressive. To make an entire block yeah, the whole look street. identical to the game. To have the house at the end of the street with the sniper up in the window, that is exactly the same house. Yeah. The path that Joel's like taking in the houses and the cars and the way they're positioned, exactly the same. Yeah. It's incredible attention to detail. Yeah. Somebody sat down with the game and was like, we're going to make this as close as possible and we saw because we see in the behind the scenes this a lot of this a lot of this is practical yes right yeah. so they really made this street look like this and it's for a 5 10 minute scene oh, it's but a it's big incredible. scene incredible yeah right but it's like a 10 minute scene they didn't make movies would make a block like this for an entire film oh my god they gosh, did this yeah. for 10 minutes of one episode yeah yeah it's amazing it's yeah Beyond amazing, for sure. And instead, so another change from the game here is Joel doesn't encounter anyone. There's just one sniper, right? Right. You don't fight 50 guys, which is fine. Joel doesn't need to be the superhero. He doesn't need to kill 100 dudes. It's fine. He gets to him. He sneaks upstairs. And instead of like a really nasty fight between Joel and the sniper, which Mm -hmm. happens in the game, uh, which of course ultimately Joel wins, duh. Uh, he kills him, but he's yeah. just like a faceless villain, right? He's just uh, the guy attacks him, so he has to kill him. Yeah. It's a very easy decision. This guy, he gets the drop on him. He's an old man. Yeah. And Joel's just like, he. I, I've never seen this side of Joel 
in this show, Mm -hmm. but he begs the guy, please don't. Yeah. Like, I don't want to kill you. Like, Joel Joel is starting to find his humanity again because Joel is a cold-blooded killer. Yes. And this is a moment where he's like, He's just don't make me do begging it. Begging him just to don't not don't make me do it. I don't him. want to do it. No, yeah. Because Ellie, just last episode, was like, she killed a lot of innocent people. Sure, yeah. And he had to like, sleep on that. He had yes. to sit on that and be like, fuck. And and they just killed this other guy, yeah. right? Brian, who's sitting there crying oh my and gosh. screaming and making yeah. it so human and so real. And it's like such a weight and he sees what the and and he also gets to see something he hasn't seen in a long time right he gets to see he's been around Tess he's been around all these guys who've done terrible things they've killed a lot of innocent people and that part of them is totally shut off right and he sees Ellie shoot someone right and he's reminded of that initial like feeling he had Back when he had a soul. Right. Well, that's what Ellie introduces to him yeah. now is that he is waking up to like his conscience is coming back. Yeah. He's not as numb to killing as he used to be. Like yep. he is seeing the people for people and realizing that, you know, that's somebody's Ellie. That's somebody's Sarah. That's somebody's whoever. Sure. You know, so it's painful. It's really painful. And, you know, this, this whole episode was super painful in many ways, and I think, I mean, we'll get to the ending, but just, yeah, I think Joel is having kind of a, I guess I would call it like a reality check in some ways. <laughs> I'd have to watch, but I'm almost positive his dialogue there is exactly the same as the dialogue with the soldier before Tommy kills him. He says, please don't. Mm. I'm almost. I think it is. I think it's. Please don't when he when he's like about to get shot, and then I think it's please don't when he goes to reach for the gun. Mm. Right, he's on the other side of it this mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Right, where he he has the drop on the guy. The guy's gonna pull the gun on him, and and now that he's in the, the role of time where he gets to you know get the we get the drop on him. But it's it's interesting. It's the yeah. that, that vulnerability is coming yes. back in him like he used to have before Sarah died. Yeah, you know, because at that point he doesn't know Sarah's dying. Of course, right? Yeah. He still has his humanity there. He's still just a regular guy at that point, and it's once Sarah's dead that he's becomes kind of dead inside. Mm-hmm. Um, so Joel asking please to somebody like he would have just killed me knife that guy in the chest when he's screaming out this guy is just kind of sitting there was just trying to snipe them yeah it's getting harder and harder right. for him so I like that uh, I like that inclusion of having that just that moment and then we cut to straight up the video game oh my God. where Joel is up there sniping uh, from the window yeah that is I mean I legit thought I was just holding a controller in my I hand I know it's so, like, it was perfect. It was perfect recreation of it. Perfect. Yes. Like, but then there's a face yes. to the villain. It's mm-hmm. not just random guys you're shooting through a window. No, we're seeing their side of things, too. It's Yeah, it isn't just random people. And, and the repercussion of lies. This and, is a huge yes. theme. Pay attention to this. The repercussion, the repercussion of, lies. of lies. And of love, too. It's both. But the action sequence that takes place at the end here was wonderful. I know there hasn't been like a ton of action in the show yet, but I think that this was like, it was just so cool on so many levels. Sure. This is the best action sequence of the show. Yes. Yeah. Thus far. Yeah. Everything with Joel and the sniping. And then, of course, when we get the eruption, <laughs> that was insane. Yeah. I love, because we also haven't seen a ton of infected. You know, they're definitely a part of the world, and we see, we do encounter them, but to see, like, the force and of how, how many of them there were sure. and how fast they were sure. and just how quickly they overpowered humans, lots of humans, with guns sure. was terrifying. That chaos and everything, I loved. I loved watching Ellie trying to like crawl between you know the bodies oh, as they're yeah. falling and Joel's watching her clearing the way for her protecting her from afar because when you're playing the game like that is what you have to do and it's like <laughs> it's a really stressful point for me because I don't work well under pressure but 
Like, that's entirely what he's doing in the game, where he's just trying to clear the path so that, you know, they're safe. But to see it in the show, it was just, it was very, very neat. Well, sure, but yeah, as you said, we're not, in the game, you're just, you're trying to kill everything around. Yeah. In this scenario, you can't kill everything around. Right. Right? And he focuses on Ellie, and there's this really great moment to show how connected they've become. Mm. Ellie looks out, and she sees what her path is and Mm. she sees what she's going to go for. And Joel takes a second to kind of look around and he, he can see what her plan is. And so he clears the way for that plan. They're connected in that way now to where he can kind of read her mind. And that, Mm. I love that moment so much the way that that was done. Um, So yeah, Ellie makes her way into the car. Of course, his entire focus, you don't give a shit about it anything but ellie yeah um and man he's a good shot yeah um he she gets into the car and then this gymnastic freaking little (laughs) troll thing comes in the car it's a bait it's a child clicker yes which is so a (laughs) clicker which we do not see a lot of if any child infected i don't know if she's a clicker yet but she has she's getting she's a clicker yeah she's She's... totally because she's yeah her face is like busted open and i don't know she might be a stalker still at that point because i think she can see no i think she's a clicker i think she's still like a a clicker no because her head is completely split open and they have to use the echolocation to see at that point and i don't i'd have to watch i don't think she's clicking i think that I, think I she's still she a stalker at I that point, but was. maybe we'll she's check. she's on her way. At any, at any well, rate, we're gonna watch it again. To see her and Doesn't like matter. see an infected child, of course, the symbolism and everything there. But her movement oh, was man. so gross and creepy. Just yeah. the way she like was falling over the car seats to get to Ellie. And Terrifying. of course, she's also the uh, infected that kills Kathleen. Yeah. So we we get her back. Um, which is, yeah, yeah. Uh, I was going to say there's, like, retribution there, but there really isn't. It's just interesting that it's a kid that kills her. Sure. Yeah. You know? Sure, because she was going to kill children. Yeah. So a child, so a child kills her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, yeah, it's fate. Her death was good, but the best death. Oh, my God. <laughs> One of the best Easter eggs, too. Like, I thought Savage Starlight was great, and it was. It was but weird. if you've played the game and you've played it, Poorly, <laughs> yeah. poorly died. enough to have died by a boomer or boomer, a uh, bloater. bloater. Uh-huh. Boomers from boomer. Left for Dead, <laughs> <laughs> but they're very similar. Um, anyway, uh, if you've if you've died to a bloater, which if you've played the game, you probably have. Uh, he grabs a hold of your jaw and here, and he rips your head off from the jaw. Oh, it's so gnarly. And that is exactly what happens to good old Perry, a.k.a. Tommy, the voice of Tommy. Yeah. What a uh, great death for that actor, too, to have, like, such a, like, game-relevant sure. way to die. Like, that's so cool, and it's it looks amazing. Everything with the bloater, him picking up people and throwing them around just so easily. Yeah. Was amazing. Yeah. Such a great, such a great addition, such a great callback, so to speak, for the game. Um, to see it, to see a cutscene death, yeah. To see like one of the ways you die as a character is so great. I mean, it's it's essentially like putting a fatality from Mortal Kombat into a Mortal Kombat movie, right? To sure. see that specific death, yeah. From it's such a visceral death, though. Yeah, it's so great. It, like, it I mean, works so well. It's and... from a distance, and this show is yeah. not overly graphic, but to, we know what happened. We saw it enough <laughs> yes. that I'm like, yeah, that's one of the ways you die <laughs> yeah. in the game. How cool to see that. So, super rad. Um, you know, he, I don't know what was up with him. I don't know if he was, like, in love with Kathleen or no, what. He sacrifices himself so fast for her. He like, lies to everybody know. for her. Yeah. He's like, we follow you. You're the one that saved us. You're I the think one that it's changed just, everything. Yeah. yeah. I think he's just, you know, his allegiance is to her because he sure. believes that she's the one that saved them all, even though she's the one that doomed them all. Absolutely. So his, yeah. you know, his belief here is completely... Um, askew, but well, faith is yeah misplaced for sure. Hundred percent. She dies. All the other people die, most likely. 
Yeah, I mean, and it's possible they're... a couple of them lived, but yeah. more than likely they all died. The way they come out, though, and, and, and we did see that the majority of these were practical. Mm -hmm. They were people in, in costumes and uh, prosthetics and whatnot. So really cool on that. The speed. Oh, my God. Just the speed, speed? in which they come out of there, like freaking, you know, insects. Yes. Just just swarming out of very there. Very World War Z. Yes. But not as like CG looking. Oh my just God. They looked terrifying. so amazing. And just thinking like, cause you know, they were talking about the tunnels and though they're cleared, even though Fedra, you know, pushed all the infected down below. And yeah, just the fact that there was so many under there and they are like still pouring out. Like even after when Ellie, Sam and Henry and Joel, like when they, when they leave, like, we still see the infected just pouring out. Oh, absolutely. Out. Like there, there's so continuing. many down there. Yeah. But, they, you know, Fedra contained them down there sure. years ago. Yeah. And supposedly wiped them out, liars. Um, but they were lying about everything, so that makes perfect sense. Of course. Um, yeah. But, yeah, they're trapped down there, and uh, they finally break out, and all hell breaks loose. This scene got me so excited. Yes. I know it wouldn't be for a long time. But this scene got oh. me so excited for the Rat King. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to say another word. Yeah. But that just made me believe. Because Weta Workshop works mm. on this show. I saw it in the credits. It's Weta. Makes sense. Weta does the best shit. Um, man, they got Weta. That's so cool. Um, but just, ah, the Rat King. I, <laughs> I, I fully believe they can do that complete justice on television now. That's something I never thought. That we'd see, but that probably wouldn't be till season three. So it's like that could be could be ways four away. years from now. Yeah. I mean, ugh, I don't even want to think. We about don't that. think about that. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, so we 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 move on from there. Kathleen's dead. Perry's dead. Uh, the hunters are all but de you know dead. dead for the most part. I'm sure you know some are back in the QZ still. Sure. Uh, whatever, but the, the soldiers are dead. Um, which now means that she probably brought all their protection and a lot of their guns. Yeah. You know, and, and you now know, all those and now all those people out. that are that are counting on her and we're like, you know, like worshiping her and following her. Oh, they're yeah. all unprotected now. Yeah, they're gonna get messed up. And, and those killed. and and now the infected are they're yeah. not contained underground anymore. Exactly. So even when they try to leave, it's even more dangerous because there's going to be so many infected so out there. So she doomed that whole damn city. Yes, she did. She doomed that whole damn city. So once again, revenge bad. Yes, revenge is bad. Uh, anyway, so uh, after that, uh, they see the bridge, which this time uh, we do not go to and jump off of into the water. <laughs> no. uh, it's just in the distance. Yeah. And they stop at a motel. Mm -hmm. um, not one... Like we would know it. Very run down version of yes. a motel. And we get a, a, a pretty faithful recreation of how it plays out in the game. Yeah. But there's two, there's two differences that are really huge. Really huge. And I absolutely love these changes. Mm -hmm. um, what are they? Well, in the show, when Ellie... It discovers that Sam has been bitten on the leg. She tells him that her blood is medicine. And she, you know, slices her hand and holds it on his wound. And she's, like, trying to heal him and you know, in a really rudimentary kind of way. But obviously that doesn't work. So Sure, adding, she's being sold this idea. That she's the cure. That she's, the, yeah. that she's some savior, right? So, like, she's got she this, know? like, Jesus complex. Sure. Where but I'm just going to heal yeah, and she would know that, that, like, I mean, she knows a little bit about vaccines and stuff, but she doesn't necessarily know that sure. her blood wouldn't be How's able to, How's she going to know like, unless she tries? Yeah. She ain't Swamp Thing, though. She's not Swamp Thing, and it's very, very sad because, yeah, she will you know, so that happens. He asks her to stay up with him. In, and the, she, in the game, just for, you know, to say that really quick, in the game, uh, Sam does not tell anybody. No. And they wake up in the morning and Sam attacks Ellie. So she has no idea that he's bitten. No one does. Uh, they don't know until he's turned. Yeah. So that's that's a that's a massive change, and 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 her using her her hand to try to heal him, um, and promising to stay up with him all night when she doesn't uh, is another thing. Sorry, go ahead. Well, that's what I was just gonna say. Yeah, that she promises him that she'll stay up, and she doesn't. 
And it's very... For some reason, I thought you already said that. I apologize. Oh, it's okay. It's just very sad. It's really, really sad to see that. Because they were, you know, they... I think they have great chemistry together. Uh, you know, there, there's a friendship that's developing there. And it's just, like, take it away so quickly. Yeah. And then the other thing I think that is, um, you know, it's, it's, I guess, a change, but really it's just an addition, is that after, um, you know, of course, once... Uh, Henry shoots Sam, he pretty much immediately kills himself because he can't handle the fact that his whole reason to live, he just killed. Yeah. Um, Joel and Ellie are burying their bodies. And we don't get anything like that in the no. show. We just kind of jump to the next portion of the story. So spending time with them burying uh, Sam and Henry was really interesting. And, you know, obviously Joel, like... They, they do mirror each other, right? Like Sam and Henry and Joel and Ellie. It's two sides of the same coin. Like they were trying to do the same thing ultimately, take care of a kid. And it's just, I love Joel's reaction to seeing Ellie's note on his little Etch-A-Sketch that she's sorry. And it's just, it was, it was a big bummer. <laughs> sure. To say the least. Sure. I mean, she absolutely feels like she failed him, even though there's literally nothing she could do. She gave him hope uh, that she could uh, have saved him. Now, could they have amputated his leg and saved him? Um, we see evidence for that in the first episode in the QZ. There's people with amputations, and it takes you know, like 12 plus hours from the for leg. to get to, from the leg up yeah. into there. Um, and they were, and he was bitten pretty recently. Yes. So I do feel like they might have been able to save him. Maybe. Um, but regardless, I mean, that's nor here nor there. I don't know what Ellie's knowledge is on that and, sure. and whatnot. And they don't blame her for it. So I don't know if they're going to bring that up. They might. They might. Ellie might be like, you know, what if, if I told you guys, maybe we could have cut off his leg and saved him. I could absolutely see that dialogue sure. happening and, and her, you know, but she does. She thinks she's, you know, um, the hero. She thinks that she's freaking Luke Skywalker or something, that she's going to come in and she's going to save everyone. And, and she's got the magic cure in her blood. And this is like, a, you know, a reminder of like, that's that's not how this works. And, right. and you're not. And, and you can't save everybody. So good stuff. Uh, great stuff. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Honestly, better than the game in that way. And yes. uh, most of their decisions are. Um, another addition here is that uh, when they're walking through that little t block town, um, Ellie's trying to invite them to come with mm -hmm. them to, mm -hmm. um, you know, Tommy's. Mm -hmm. And when... You know, she's, he's like, you know, Joel's like, no, 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 no. And Ellie's like, oh, I'll keep asking him and this and that. Mm. But then when they're in the hotel room, uh, right before the whole thing goes down where Henry has to kill his brother, uh, Joel's going to invite him. Yeah. Right? He's opened up to it. It's like, yet again, he's finding that humanity. It's like, I'm, I'm going to take you guys with us. Like, you know, I trust you guys now. Yeah. And then, of course, everything falls apart. And, and they're kind of stuck with this, like, once again, failure. Like yeah. everyone we just, come across dies. Which is and everything that's why like he doesn't want to care about anybody because everyone that he cares about he loses. Yeah. So. So, uh, great stuff. Amazing. I mean, uh, what a phenomenal episode! Yes. Uh, like all of the others. Yes. So yeah. far, five out of five. We're over halfway done now no. with the show. Um, <laughs> no. I'm hoping that you know episode eight and nine will be hour 20, hour 30, like the first two episodes, or well, episode so. one and episode three, sorry. Um, I just, I can't imagine the last episode is anything less than like an hour and 20. Yeah. I'll be kind of shocked, honestly. But um, if you watch the next on, uh, it is revealed, it's spoilers for the next episode, technically, just what's in the trailer, nothing else. Yeah. Um, we, we do get to um, Jackson. I mean, in the game, it's different. Um, so it looks like they're going to make the, a change there. But uh, we, we meet, we get to Tommy. I mean, yeah. it's, very, it's in the trailer. Uh, which, you know, it, it is interesting that they reveal that Tommy is alive and that they find them mm. in the trailer. Sure. Uh, you would think because Joel is not oh, sure his brother's alive. No, he's not, but... Right? Yeah. So, anyway, 
Um, 